Hey guys, so today's video is going to be talking about all the different ferret breeds, coats, colours and markings. There are a lot more to ferrets that most people don't realise and if you're anything like me who does go for specific colours, I say you have interest in the different ones you can get. Just a quick add-in, ferrets for the most part are all the same, they're not like dog breeds where they will have different health complications or different behaviours due to colours. The only one type of ferret that has issues besides that, they are all the same, just not in colour and personality, of course. Now, I'm sure many have seen this chart float around the web, and although this does have the basic colours, there's no details, and some look very similar, so using this can be hard to work out. Also, colourings are not the only thing. So first, let's talk about your basic colours and what they insist of. So first is your basic sable, this is a very common one. They're very dark brown with black legs, they have a mask and their coat is often a creamy white. Next up we have your albino, the fur is white or cream and the eyes are reddish pink and this is a colour due to the lack of pigment. Next we have silver. Silver has quite the variation. They can be anything from a dark silver, which they will normally have a heavier mask, or a light silver. Their undercoat is cream or white. And silvers can have the capability of running out to be a dew. Next we have sandy or champagne. They are light brown legs and tail. Mask can be full or slight and light brown in colour. And their undercoat is a light brown. Next up we have our black sable or dark sable. So these are the same as your basic sable except everything is a lot darker. So sometimes they can be black and the undercoat is a white or cream. Then we have kind of a rare coloration, which is the lilac. So they are a mix of the champagne, chocolate, silver, and gray. When the colors combine during season changes, they mix and give the coat a lilac hue. We then have the black eyed whites or do. This is where their coat is a white or cream and their eyes are black. Next we have another supposedly rare, this is the cinnamon. Guard hairs have a rich reddish brown colour and covers more the body. And the legs and the tail has the most present of colouring and that's where the deepest colouring occurs. Then we have our marked whites which is pretty self-explanatory. They are basically a black eyed white but they can have markings such as silver stripes. We then have our solid colored ferrets where it's again self-explanatory. They are one color, whether that's black or anything. We then have our panda. They can be any color, but the head consists of all white. They don't have really any colorations on their head. They might get a very light faded mask, but pandas are most commonly either a dark silver or a light silver. And then we have our point slash Siamese, and these are very similar to your Siamese cats. So they are called points because their shoulder, hips, legs, and tail are very dark, while their torso remains very, very light. So there are your basic descriptions of colours. Now let's get into the nitty gritty and go on to the markings ferrets can have. Up first we have mitt which is one of my favourite markings and this is where their front paws and back paws are white and they basically just look like they're wearing little gloves. We then have bibbed. This can be on any coloured ferret except their, underneath their chin is a white creamy or sometimes even apricot and it just looks like a bib. We then have the badger. This is basically where the ferret will have a thick white stripe going down the center of the head and it looks like a badger stripe. 
Going into more smaller markings, we have the zipper, which most sables will have, and it's where they will have a dark line going down their stomach. We then have your mask. This goes across the eye area, and you can also get a T mask, which is basically your basic mask with an extra line connecting and going up and the mask is normally the same color as their body i also want to talk about the term roaning this isn't necessarily a breed and i don't think it's a marking either i don't really know what to put this under but roaning is basically a ferret that is either black sable chocolate or silver they have the white underguard hairs and they can roan out to a completely different color so black roans and silver roans they will most often as they age roan out to be a black eyed white or black roans which is actually what clover is they can roan out to be a silver now let's go on to breed slash coats these are kind of merged into one there's only three, so let's talk about them. And I will tell you which one does have more complications. One thing I want to get out is Marshall is not a breed. There's no such thing as a Marshall breed of ferret. Marshall is just the place most people get their ferrets from. I don't know why people say mine's a Marshall ferret like it's a dog breed. That's just like getting your guinea pig from Petco and saying it's a Petco guinea pig. They're not the same things. Also, to quickly add in, no supporting pet stores, adopt or shop responsibly via breeder. Alrighty, so here are the three different coats or breeds that you can get. First up, we have Shorthead. This is your basic coat that nearly every ferret has. You have your Longhead. This is just like your normal Shorthead ferret winter coat. You know how it gets quite long and lush. This is that but all year round they are also classified as semi angoras or part angoras so this is what clover is clover always has a very long coat and not once has she become a short head so she is what you would classify as a semi angora or a long head then last but not least, there is Angoras. These are extremely long and luscious hair, just like a Angora bunny. But before you fall in love with these beautiful creatures, there's one thing that I do have to mention. Angoras, sadly, are the ones that do often get a little bit more health complications. So the nose of Angora can be quite different to the standard short-haired ferret that can have extra skin folds near the nostrils or fine hairs growing on or in the folds of the nostril that has been as causing any issues with breathing of the angora and simply a cosmetic issue. So this might not be a big, big issue for some, but it may cost you a surgery. So it's definitely something to take into consideration try and get a angora from a very good breeder i would never support backyard breeders when it comes to angoras i personally love the different colors and will admit i do have a color scheme for my pets some may not notice but all mine except three are gray and white i love gray slash blue animals give this a thumbs up if you want a rat edition many colors and breeds of rats some people may not know Another disclaimer, although I like colours and do go for breeds, that's not to say I get them purely for looks, nor should you. Ovi ferrets, as I said, mainly are the same besides their colours. Things like dogs and such should be researched and not just for breeds or looks. Different breeds require different care and prone to different things.